do not hesitate to reach us. Now, why, why are they read this? Now, make you understand. There are so many, many, many other companies that has left Nigeria. I think I said last week we have over 30 companies that has run away. Run, 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 run from Nigeria. They run, Waka. Now this is the Novera and they are gone. And I think we should, let us just take a time to go through our Prime Minister's uh, handle and see what is going on today. After they have told you that sit at home has they have killed the sit at home, sit at home has died, the sit at home is resurrected, sit at home is buried, oh, Biafra is finished. Oh, Simon, every Biafra is now doing the needful. I want you to understand that the Biafras are doing the needful, it's no longer and people come. Biafrans are now risen. Not that they are waking up. Every Biafra don't wake up. Fool. Every Biafra now don't wake up. Kuro kuro li. I won't make you get this. Every Biafra don't wake up. Kuro kuro fool fool. So people are now willingly, willingly observing the sit at home, observing everything doing their votes, doing their votes. I don't know if you have voted or if you have not. If you have not, and you are still looking at me, you still go about from one platform to the other. You still go about fighting against the restoration of Biafra. I don't know what to tell you, but the only thing to tell you is that there's that music uh, one man sang, a promoter sang. He said, I'm going to get back on one or Lanka. Something which you refuse to do. When that thing we reckon, hey, the day of reckoning, you go cry. Now you go cry, don't be me. So I want everybody to think again about what is going on and how they are going on. Like I said, we are going to pass through our Prime Minister's handle before we go into the program today. So let's go. Let's hear this. I want you to understand that there is nothing we do today that is against any law. There is no way any government will unleash its own military to kill their citizens and you tell me that somebody is going to support that. No! It is only that many people don't know their right. That's why Nigeria have taken advantage of that to kill many people for many years. Thousands of people have been killed. Today, northern Nigeria, they are ravaging the villages. The terrorists are sacking and burning entire villages and there is no military there because the military is already part of them. All they do now is to send their own legitimized terrorists in uniform to Biafra land to do the job for them. But I thank Chiko Kabiyama that the Biafra Liberation Army, the Defense Force of Biafra, have surprised them. They thought it is by Jesse, or Jesse Naba, or System Naba. Today, I am very, very proud of the Biafra Defense Force. I'm very proud of the Biafra resistance fighters. The way they are neutralizing these terrorists is something that we are going to write in the book. And our children will read about it. How they stood gallantly, defended our land, and neutralized criminals and terrorists who come to kill us. It will continue to go down in the history. Now, they will continue to go down in the history. Maybe we will just go through some few um, some few uh, updates from our Prime Minister before we go into the program this evening. Now, <clears throat> like I used to tell us, if waiting we they do is wrong against the law, how do you think that the any government in EU, in America, will give you an office as a liaison office. You know what liaison office means? Liaison office stand the same thing as embassy office. Now I want to tell you something. As Musa alleged or lied to people to deceive people to this um to, to distract people from facing the reality, Musa went on to tell people that 
he will fish them out, those that are sponsoring their own freedom, that he is going to fish them out. And then I want to tell everybody today, if what Musa is saying is true, why is very simple? Okay, me, I am a spen. All Musa need to do, call Spanish embassy, see this person, who, you don't even need to uh, um, go about the, uh, um, uh, you don't need to look for my name. The only thing Musa should do, I do like program. Carry one of my life program. Give Spanish embassy, this man is one of them. They will use my live program. They will know my location. They will come to my house, come visit me, or they will call me for telephone, make a, give me invitation. Or they will call here, come bundle me, go give Musa. So for the fact that Musa could not, will not, cannot, have no right to do that, because Musa cannot go to the um, Spanish embassy and tell them, like you hear those elders said, uh, and tell them, ah, please, see this man now, uh, this man with glasses, he is preaching that people should support Biafra. And they will ask him, what, is, what do you mean by Biafra? Remember, Spain cannot and can never listen to him. In Spain, today, as I'm talking to you, we have a part of Spanish uh, uh, land called um, uh, um, Catalonia that want to live, they want to separate themselves from Spain. They know they want anybody. When they rise to do their protest, the police go even guard them, make sure say nobody won't. Even among the protesters, when you shout to one another, police go tell you, make you calm down. And the police from the side that are protesting, we join them in protest with their uniform. It's only in Biafra land that you will see police shoot at people because they carry car. Even sometimes with nothing, they will raise their hands and say, we are saying, give us freedom. Police will open fire on them. Only in Nigeria. Since Buhari took office, how many times have you seen people gone to do protests and come back alive? Only those that go to do protests according to the will of Nigeria, that they know that their protests will mount to nothing. If you do answers, you will mount. They will mount you. If you want to stand against the hype, of price, food price, they go mock you. School fees, they go mock you. Freedom, they go mock you. Police incessant killing, they go mock you. Police brutality, army, they go mock you. you. If you dare stand to protest against the displacement of your people by the Nigerian army, by Nigerian headers, they go mock you. Today, as I am speaking to you, the Funani people have come out openly and the one Buhari, um, what is his name, Tinubu, they told Tinubu, must, you must create, a, what do you call it, livestock ministry. And if you don't understand what this livestock ministry stands for, the livestock ministry will be a ministry that they will govern themselves because it's a ministry of cow, ministry of malu. By the time you have Ministry of Malu, they have their spokesperson in your own government. And this man will tell you, there will be a location. I want you to make one at the gate. Only them. Listen, do you know there is a ministry for Amajiri children? Do you know that? There is a ministry for Amajiri children. And this ministry is a ministry that sees about the Amajiris, all those children of Funani and Aboki in the north that are in the street, that are doing Babiala. They have allocation every year. You don't know. And you are there fighting me for telling you to repent and fight for your own freedom. You look at me and you see me as your problem. There are many people that need deliverance. There are many people that need deliverance. And they must be delivered, whether they like it or not. 
we will continue. Let's just move on a little bit and see what our Prime Minister says. We have built the foundation, have a more organized government. We have started the self-defense of Biafra, not only against the terrorist state, but making sure that nobody comes to Biafra land and kill and go free. So when you are going out there, use the diplomatic channel to speak and seek a redress to what has happened to Biafra people. You need to be speaking in a language that will... We have right. All we need to do is to sponsor our own freedom, irrespective of what Musa tell you or what Musa may be crying for. How much Musa cry? We are not listening. We are not stopping. We must move on. They are crying because they can no longer come and hunt people down for no reason. They are now crying because the days are gone. When you come to Biafra land, you slaughter people the way you like, like Wiki did, like so many of them did. Like you come to Mazenam Dekano House, you gone down to it, eight able bodied men, and nothing happened, and you went away freely. Like you come to about where they were praying, you gone down people unnumbered. And you went away. You kidnapped so many people, you went away. And you tell me you are working for who? It's only in our land that we have oppression, golden dance, oppression up, crocodile, oppression smile, oppression crocodile smile, oppression python dance, oppression golden down, oppression golden snoop, or whatever, whatever. And I want you to understand that all these things have ceased. They still did ask yourself why have they ceased if they have not ceased where are they why is musa all of a sudden started crying why is it that the nigerian army are now crying hosting rallies hosting conferences against the social media listen social media is one thing you cannot control because social media is there to tell you the truth social media is where you see people expose that hidden things that thing where you don't want to make anybody know it could enter social media that's your hidden atrocities those evil way that they, they do for secret you go see person where they pass road you go put phone for pocket you go cover it like this you go video up you go put up on social media that is why they are scared if not why should the Nigerian army be hosting conferences in the name of seminar to tell people, to teach people what they should be doing in social media, to teach bloggers what they should be doing in the... No wonder uh, one Oya Kilome, Maria Oya Kilome now, don't do anything, don't call Biafra because she has been warned. Nigeria is a place they tell you you are in a democracy, but you are truly in army autocratic system, army tyranny, army whatever dictatorship, leadership, whatever they call it. Nigeria army can go and um, arrest you. Nigeria army arrest people. 
I want to ask you, of all these times have you heard the police who went and arrest people? It's always a me that go to arrest them. It's always a me that go to go do whatever, do whatever. But we are not. All right, wonderful people. Welcome back to this wonderful channel where we bring you back-to-back -back updates and information as to the heart. Uh, it's a new week, a uh, new Monday, new week uh, to jolly, to go, to work hard, to make moves, uh, to start a new plan, to start a new business, uh, to start a new ideas, to pu push into what you have ever desired. It's never too late to start now. Um, there is this talk that stayed, start now channel. <laughs> So when you start now, you are actually starting late. You are actually starting early, uh, no matter how many years you are or how old you have been on this earth. The banyan sinu sitata osita de bama no melegine no de balubo. Also want to remind you to subscribe to our channel, like, comment, share, and also remember to on your notification button as so that whenever our news drop, you go be the first who collect. I'm making a munu. Yeah. I see the be my wonderful people. Uh, the information where we say it they drop for my table this Monday morning. Uh, this one a bloody information. Oh, I see the be they say seven people has been killed and over one thousand has been kidnapped as gunmen attack Castina. Uh, I know some of you will be saying, uh, why will I be bringing matters that concerns Castina uh, in this particular channel? Um, but the one thing you need to understand is that they are human being, and um, uh, our people say that uh. No one ever lost coco. Everyone has been such a pain. I can no more than anyone at all. Queer, and that proverb says, "He that sees a hen uh, uh, playing with its legs in feces uh, should uh, chase the hen and rescue it, because you don't know if you are the one that is going to eat the hen's leg." And as it be, uh, make I bring you the matters where we say it happened for that side, because all of them were now human being when they be. At least seven people were killed and hundred kidnapped on Saturday night when government attacked a rural community in Nigeria's northwestern Castana State. Residents and police said yesterday. A ritual report said it was the latest attack against residents in the north of the country. Armed gangs, known locally as bandits, have frequently raided communities in the northwest, kidnapping residents, students, and motorists for ransom. Residents said gunmen on motorbikes arrived in my Dabino village in the Musa local government area of Castina and started shootouts, shooting sporadically, forcing re residents to flee. Hazan Aliyu told Reuters by phone that the attack took residents by surprise and dozens of women and children were confirmed missing. They killed seven people, including burning two children, Aliyu said. They spent more than six hours destroying our properties, he added. Awalu Ismail, another resident, said the gunmen first blocked all roads leading to my double before the attack. They burnt down our shops, vehicles, and took away our livestock. They also kidnapped my wife and more than 100 women and vehicles, he said. Kasna State Police spokesman Abubakar Ali Sadiq confirmed the attack and the seven deaths, but would not say whether anyone was missing. He said police were investigating. The remaining men who did not flee are living in fear and waiting to hear news about their abducted loved ones, said Mohammed Sani, whose sister was abducted. Meanwhile, more than 1,000 people died during Hajj this year, according to a Reuters Italy, as extreme heat hammered the nearly 2 million who took part in the annual Muslim pilgrim to Mecca. Most of the dead were Egyptians. Security and medical source told Reuters on Sunday that the Egyptian's death toll had risen to 672 and another with 25 were missing. A total of 236 Indonesians died, according to Indonesian government data, while India's external affairs agency said 98 Indian citizens died during Hajj. Further deaths were reported by Tuzinia. Jordan, Iran, and Senegal, making this year's total tool at 1,144 people, according to a Reuters Italy.
An Egyptian crisis unit tax with investigating the situation said on Saturday it has suspended license of 16 tourism companies and referred them to the public prosecutor accusing them of being responsible for debt. He said we are mainly among pilgrims not registered under the official system. The unit said 31 deaths were confirmed as a result of chronic illness among official registered pilgrims. My brother, my people, I don't see a city happen uh, for that Castena state. Um, you remember around 2015, uh, 16 and 17, uh, when the government of Nigeria were negotiating with the terrorists uh, during the time of Chibo girls. It was only 80-something, either 83 Chibo girls uh, that was kidnapped then. And the, the government of Nigeria decided to negotiate uh, with them uh, because they felt that uh, negotiating with uh, uh, bandits would be the way uh, to make way. And um, everybody, even the world, kn knew that that was the greatest mistake uh, that the Nigerian government made uh, because uh, you negotiated with these people, gave them million, millions, uh, billions of naira, and in turn, uh, the Chibok girls were not released. The millions were used to purchase a lot of weapons and now the government is still negotiating and a lot of people are still dying. I believe that it is paramount and the first paramount and the uh, uh, first uh, work of the government is to make sure that um, uh, 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 security is provided for the citizens. But over here, that is not what we are seeing. As it be, they say multi-million public assets under attack as vandals plunder bridge railing, steal power cables, others. Uh, I wonder why some people will be doing this thing. But let's go down to the full detail of the information. On June 27, 2024, the Lagos Rapid Response Squad officers apprehended a 18-year-old boy for stealing lead road stored light from the newly renovated 10 Mainland Bridge. The suspect, who was said to live in Makoko, a slum settlement in Lagos, was identified as Mubarak Abdullahi. Lead lights were energy efficient, long lasting lighting solution using lighting emitting diodes to produce light, clear illumination. Lead road lighting, according to experts, sufficiently improved visibility, safety, and energy efficiency. Installed on bridges like Tenim Lam Bridge, Niger Bridge, lead reduced accidents. And operational cost led offer lower energy consumption longer lifespan and reduced maintenance compared to traditional lighting uh, my people when i don't see i see they happen according to the uh, safety nigeria an online emergency and safety website and and led road stored light in nigeria costs between seven thousand and fifteen thousand per unit uh, i wonder why this if you all these uh, vandals, most of them are these house people that are doing iron condemn. I, I think it's even high time uh, that the government start looking into this iron condemn business. Uh, is either, is either uh, that, uh, that they are being built or that they start paying tax or that the government look into some of these things because there are a lot of criminal activities uh, going on with this iron condemn and the rest of them. You see these people going into somebody's house, uh, going into somebody's house to take what is there, and other other things that are not supposed to be done. You see these house people doing this, especially then at the one all over all over Nigeria, all over the southeast, south south southwest. These people can come inside your house, carry your gen, and do all manner of things to your properties. And I wonder why a, a sound human being uh, will choose this type of way uh, to be able to make it because uh, I don't know how much they will be getting from that kind of business because the, everything is just to uh, get this thing and sell it at auction price. Meanwhile, let's go to the other state. About 1,000 displays has Delta demolished 40 buildings. Um, it's like the present government, the government of um, 2023 to 2024, and also the government that follows uh, uh, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu are uh, the government of demolition. Uh, it first started in Lagos, and next was Enugu, the next was Anambra, and now we are seeing the same thing being replicated in Delta State. Let's go down to the full detail of the information. 
Over 1,000 people were displaced as Delta State Government on Friday demolished hotels, schools, among other buildings at the popular 74 Road and Hawaii Road areas near Government House Asaba, the state capital. The chairman of the State Task Force on Recovery of Government Land, Mr. Frank Omari, who led the members of the committee during the demolition exercise, vowed to go after the land grabbers who misled innocent citizens in buying government land. Omari said the property owners had ended. Speaker Carlo uh, has said that he is optimistic that Mazen Nandekano will soon be released. Uh, Deputy Speaker Carlo, he's also from Abia State. Uh, he's more like Mazen Nandekano's brother. Uh, he has made a statement that um, he's optimistic that Nandekano will be released soon, as soon as possible. Uh, I don't doubt his antecedent. I don't doubt his uh, belief. Or how optimistic he is, but the uh, the where I have doubt is uh, is not about saying uh, that you are optimistic that Mazen and the Canon will be released very soon. Uh, but my point is, uh, what are the efforts that is being made uh, to be able to uh, make sure that Kano is released from the DSS detention? Uh, what effort? What effort? What effort are they making to be able to actualize this? Uh, because uh, some people say that I'm um, too much talking, talking, not a full basket. Uh, but action speaks louder than words. Maybe before I come back to that, let's go down to full detail of this particular information. Deputy Speaker of the House of Representatives, Honorable Benjamin Carlo, confirmed on Tuesday that he has met with the detained leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, Namdekano, a couple of times at the Department of State Service facility, expressing high hopes that he will soon regain his freedom. Amended on Section 107, Bracket 1 of the Administration of Criminal Justice Act 2015. Honorable Kano, who disclosed this in a statement issued in Abuja through his Chief Press Secretary, Levinus Mwabiohu, expressed excitement over the recent call by 50 members of the 10th House of Representatives, led by Honorable Obi Agocha, speaking for, seeking for the release of the 10th leader of the IPOB. He also applauded the lawmakers spread across the six geopolitical zones of the country and the political parties for throwing their weight behind him on the appeals for Kano's freedom. According to the Deputy Speaker, there are expectations that the South East Kakus will also arise in Tunisian to soon support Unison soon to support the effort. Recalling the impeachment of the Peace in the South East Project, PISE, a social advocacy group he founded that promotes the idea of a non kaineki approach to resolving the security challenges and other soci sociological issues in the South East geopolitical zone of Nigeria. Carlos said that the release of the IPOB leader was very crucial to the restoration of peace in the zone. He said that a milestone has been recorded in his private engagement with the authorities on achieving a political solution in Kano's case. The Deputy Speaker recalled that Honorable Agocha accompanied him in one of those engagements with the decision makers in the country on the issue. Honorable Carlo, however, stated that some high-profile security issues are not product of advertisements in the media, hence the need to keep them confidential in order to not to jeopardize the gains the gains so far are made. The Deputy Speaker, who also re revealed that he has met with Khan a couple of times in the Department of State Service. Detention facility said that the hopes are high that the IPOB leader will soon regain his freedom. In the last visit, two weeks before the court appearance, Carlo had discussed and obtained a firm assurance on the side of the IPOB leader on the need for sustainable peace in the region. Notably, that agreement has since been communicated to the light of the authorities and Kano's younger brother as his family representative. While thanking the lawmakers for their support, Carlo, who also represented Ben, the federal constituency of Abia State, appealed to Ndi Ibo to remain calm and hope and avoid provocative comments on the issue in the light of the treason that the government of the day cannot be compelled either covertly or overly.
He stressed that with diplomacy, a solution would be finalized. Carlo also warned against merchandise of Madison and Nicano's incarceration for selfish economic gain, which runs at variance with his wish, emphasizing that the IPOB leader should not be used as a, as a political tool for any political capital. He urged all those generally supporting the advocacy for his freedom to go about it, it dispassionately with the face of humanity and for no personal interest so that the work quietly done on it so far will not be a waste. <laughs> uh, my brother, um, this one is coming from uh, Deputy Speaker of House of Assembly, uh, Carl, who is also uh, the speaker representing Bende. Um, he has said a lot of things, uh, which I'm supposed to say here, uh, that a lot of people are using Mazin and the kind of issues for personal political aggrandizement. Uh, most of them knows that um, election is coming quite soon in some states, uh, especially at the southeast part. And um, you find that uh, most of these people, when election comes, you see them using Kano as as a bait uh, to.